May God be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, our God. After the astrologers had left Herod, the angel of God suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph with the command, get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you otherwise. Herod is searching for the child to destroy him. Joseph got up, awakened Jesus and Mary, and they left that night for Egypt. They stayed there until the death of Herod to fulfill what God had said through the prophet, out of Egypt I have called my own. After Herod's death, the angel of God appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt with the command, get up, take the child and his mother, and set out for the land of Israel. Those who had designs in the life of the child are dead. Joseph got up, awakened Jesus and Mary, and they returned to the land of Israel. Joseph heard, however, that Archelaus had succeeded Herod as ruler of Judea, and Joseph was afraid to go back there. Instead, because of a warning received by Joseph in a dream, the family went to the region of Galilee. There they settled in a town called Nazareth. In this way, what was said through the prophets was fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. The good news of salvation. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Good evening, everybody. My name is Sean Collins, and I'm here to talk to you about Christian family values and parenting and to focus on the family. But first, picture it. New York City, January, 1979. The decade has seen the polarization of American society, one group vying for acceptance of and because of differences, and the other longing to go back to the good old days, whenever those were. The president had months before helped broker a cessation of fighting between Egypt and Israel. And in the USSR, in what is now the Ukraine, a baby named Volodymyr Zelensky was about to turn one. Months before, two songwriters, who previously had great success with a song spawned by being turned away at Studio 54, sat down to craft a new song for a group of young women. Once released, this would become an anthem of sorts thenceforth at discos and family reunions, and later was used in a 1996 film starring Robin Williams and Nathan Lane. I will now read for you a few selected verses from this number one Billboard Dance Club hit. Everyone can see we're together as we walk on by, and we fly just like birds of a feather. I won't tell no lie. All of the people around us, they say, yeah, yeah, can they be that close? Just let me state for the record, we're giving love in a family dose. We are family. I got all my sisters with me. We are family. Get up, everybody, and sing. In tonight's readings for the Feast of the Holy Family, we are given much guidance on what it means to lead a life of Christian family values. This is laid out in no uncertain terms and follows from the fifth commandment, stating that one shall honor their parents. It's a rather beautiful part of the first reading, I might add, from the book of Sirach, 
which directs us to look after and take care of our parents, even when they've become sick or have limited mobility or have become cranky and bitter with old age, if that's indeed the case. But I have to admit that hearing these words about parents from the Old and New Testament, especially during the Christmas season, and especially as a group of LGBTQIA plus Catholics, knowing that millions of people within our community continue to be tormented, kicked out, or worse, in Christ's name by their families because they are trans or non-binary or gay or lesbian or in any way queer is very difficult. Not everyone has the experience of a loving and compassionate parent in their own coming out journey. But then again, what does it actually mean to parent? Years ago, one of my good friends from teaching offered perhaps the best parenting advice I've ever heard. She said, the beauty of being a parent is being able to watch your children grow and develop into who they are supposed to be. Now, sometimes in the English language, we turn verbs into nouns. And I confess my ignorance of the etymology here, but I believe we have done this with the word parent. To parent is to guide, advise, and support someone, most often a child. This action sometimes is a matter of a biological link, but it doesn't need to be. When we as LGBTQIA plus people do not have a family who loves us unconditionally, we oftentimes find or look towards a surrogate parent and create a chosen family of people who support us. Our chosen family can be the people who protect us when we're vulnerable or the loved ones who give witness to the violence and bigotry we might face. Or it could be that first LGBTQIA plus person who we saw living out their truth openly, which gave each of us assembled here the strength to begin living out our own truth. These people we've chosen help support us as we better become who we are meant to be all of which is determined by God. And when I say who we are meant to be, this also includes the piece of us that is L or G or B or T or Q or I or A or any of the letters of our acronymic community, which is ever expanding as we add more people into our chosen family. And yes, that LGBTQIA plus part of us, like all the parts of us, comes from God. For we should not only obey the fifth commandment by honoring our parents, but also the ninth commandment by not bearing false witness to our neighbors by living a lie, nor by seeking to destroy the God-given peace of us that is LGBTQIA+. Because that too is bearing false witness by hiding or self-sabotaging the beauty of God's creation and the myriad and infinite wonder of the whole of humanity. We exist. We've always existed, and we dare not bear false witness to who we are as LGBTQIA plus people. Because when we honor all parts of ourselves, we're honoring God, who is, after all, parent to us all. And so, too, must we honor our earthly parents, whether we consider them biological or we've chosen them by living out our God-given truth. We must honor the family we create here on Earth. And there's no better place to think about that concept of chosen family and in how we best honor our human family than in the example of the Holy Family. In tonight's gospel reading, Joseph, the chosen father of Jesus, was deeply troubled about the safety of his family because of threats of violence against his own adopted son, Jesus. Together, the three of them fled the only home they have ever known and did not and could not look back. And when they reached the Egyptian border, they weren't met by immigration and customs enforcement, nor sent on a bus to another place even further from home, nor have their child ripped out of their arms while they waited in a cell for paperwork to be processed and their immigration status debated. In fact, they were met with open and loving arms as families are called to do from a people more concerned with the safety and support of this small family who they were not biologically linked to nor who worshiped in the same way they did, than in the legality of them even entering into the country. The Holy Family was met with the same love and compassion that we are called to show towards one another as members of the human family. It's a tenet of Christianity reinforced over 130 times in the Bible, more times than same-sex activities, I might add. It transcends the Testaments and was spoken by, of by Jesus himself. 
It's to remind us all that we as Christians are called to be inclusive because we're part of God's family. And when we demonstrate that inclusivity and love of neighbor, we honor not just our parents, both the biological and chosen, but also God and God's commandment. And so we are called to focus on the family, on our human family, and on all the members of our family who, like the Holy Family, are seeking sanctuary in dangerous times, whether they're from Guatemala or Gaza, a Congo or the Ukraine, Tehran or Texas, or fleeing from persecution because of the way in which they worship, in how they identify, or how they love. And that's how we best demonstrate Christian family values and how we honor our parents and how we focus on the family. We don't shun, we don't turn away, we don't dim the light and beauty of God's creation, which is all the twinkling lights on our human family tree. Because after all, we are family. Thank you, and amen.